Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Carmen from AXE Electronic and I'd like to welcome you back to my series of videos on basic circuit analysis. So last time we talked about series combinations of resistors and for that one we used KVL uh, to determine that each resistor in series can be represented by just a single resistor that is the sum of each individual resistor. Okay, but that's just a series combination. The next basic combination we're going to look at is a parallel combination. So first thing we need to discuss is what is parallel? So what is parallel? You might think two lines like this are in parallel. And yes, that's true, but whenever it comes to resistors, it, it takes more than just being uh, conventionally parallel to each other. So for two resistors to be parallel, it means each of their nodes are connected together. So the ends of the resistors are both connected together. Not just the end of one and the beginning of the other, but both ends are connected to the same wire. So for an example, these two resistors are in parallel okay? because the beginnings of them, these are connected together and the ends are connected together. So these are parallel. Okay? Those are parallel resistors. So these are a little bit trickier to analyze but we're going to use uh, pretty much the same method. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is using Kirchhoff's laws to derive some systems of equations and then using those systems of equations we're going to try and simplify this circuit into uh, a little bit better way to work with. That way we can just develop some rules, some general rules that we can use later on to solve more complex circuits. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down. So first thing uh, is that we're gonna just give ourselves an example circuit. So we're gonna say we have a battery here feeding two resistors in parallel like this. And we'll call them R1 and R2. Okay, we'll say that this battery has a supply voltage Vs Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and label the current here as I total. So that's the total current that's leaving the battery. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and label this I1, the current through resistor 1. Label this one I2, the current through resistor 2. Okay, so now since we have this little branch here, let me switch colors to red. Now that we have this branch at this node here, there's two paths for the current to follow. Okay, so uh, we have I1 and I2, and they're not necessarily equal to each other, okay? They could be very, very different, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to want to use Kirchhoff's current law at this node, okay? So this is just writing down what we know. So these are, this is going to be Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws. We know these to be facts, so we're going to write down what we know. And the first thing is going to be Kirchhoff's current law. So at this node marked in red, we have only one current going into it, I total. So Kirchhoff's current law says that the current in has to be equal to the current out. So the current in has to be equal to current out, which is I1 plus I2. Okay? So this is, this is Kirchhoff's current law in this circuit. Okay? So uh, now that we have this written down, another thing that we can write down is Ohm's law. Okay? Uh, but first, before we start writing down Ohm's law, we need to uh, we need to look at a little bit more detail. So I'm going to call the voltage across this resistor V1, voltage across this resistor V2. Okay. So if we were to look at Kirchhoff's voltage law, it says that around any closed loop, the sum of the voltage rises and voltage drops has to be equal to zero. So let's look at this inner loop. I'll use the green color for this one. Let's look at this inner loop. Okay. So Vs and I1. If we start down here at the bottom left, we have a rise of Vs, so up here we're at Vs, and then we go around this loop, the only other drop that we have is through R1, and then we are right back where we started. Okay, so what that tells us is that V1 has to be equal to Vs, okay, because otherwise Kirchhoff's voltage law isn't satisfied. And then we can do the same thing for the outer loop, so I'll use blue for this one. We start from here. We rise by Vs, so here, let me, I'll write this over here, Vs, oop, Vs, and now we're not going through this way, but we're going to go through the outer loop, okay, so then we have this voltage drop V2, and then we come back down to the bottom, and you'll notice that we're connected right down to that bottom node again, so that tells us that, let me switch back to black, V2 is also equal to Vs, okay, and that's one thing about resistors in parallel, is that they're always going to have the same voltage drop across them, because if their top nodes and bottom nodes are connected, then that means that they have to have the same voltage drop. Because if they don't, then KVL isn't satisfied, and you have a, 
different voltage going one path than you do compared to another path, and then uh, that doesn't satisfy KVL. So that's going to get us in trouble if we don't remember this whenever we're analyzing these circuits. So this is telling us V1 and V2 are both equal to Vs. Okay? So now we can write out Ohm's law for each of these resistors. So for V1, or for R1, we know that V1, I'll still use V1 here, is equal to I1 times R1. Okay? And then we can do the same thing for V2. So V2 is equal to I2 times R2. Okay? So then the next step, I'm just going to go ahead and write Vs here. Yes, and we can get rid of this V1 and V2. Okay? So this is Ohm's law for each of those resistors. Okay, so up here in this very top equation, you can see that we have it in terms of I1 and I2. Okay, so what that should tell us is that let's try and solve this for I1 and I2. Okay, so let's go a little bit further down, and I'll say, okay, if we, let's work on this top equation. So we have I1 times R1 is equal to Vs. If I want to get I1 by itself, all I have to do is divide both sides by R1. So we get I1 is equal to Vs divided by R1. We do the same thing here. So we have I2 times R2 is equal to Vs. So then we can say I2 is equal to Vs divided by R2. Alrighty. So now that we have these two equations here, let's plug that into the Kirchhoff's current law equation that we had at the top. So this is going to be I total is equal to Vs divided by R1 plus Vs divided by R2. All right. And now that we have that written down, what we can see is that both of these fractions have Vs in their numerator, so we can factor it out. So this can become Vs times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So whenever we were working with series resistors, we wanted to get things in terms of an equivalent resistance. So we want to simplify these resistors and get an equivalent resistance out of it. Okay, so Ohm's law tells us that current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So that means uh, voltage times 1 over resistance. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into Vs times 1 over R equivalent, or just Vs over R equivalent. So this is the last step. What we can see is that 1 over REQ is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And this is going to be how we simplify parallel combinations of resistors. We can use this, co we can use this equation for any number of par resistors in parallel, and this will give us the equivalent resistance. Okay, so this equation is a little bit more difficult to work with. This equation is a little bit difficult to work with, so instead, I'm going to simplify it. Uh, this is an equation that I use pretty frequently. Uh, so this is only going to work for two resistors, but the concept is still similar. So what we can do is that we can say REQ is equal to the product of the two resistors over the sum of the two resistors. And that's just algebra, simplifying this equation and to get R equivalent. Okay, so with this equation we can just simplify some circuits. Okay, so one thing you can notice here is that for series resistors, if you add a resistor in series, it's going to increase the effective resistance. Okay, but here you can plug in any set of numbers that you want for R1 and R2, and you can tell that the equivalent resistance is going to be less than either one of those resistors. So resistors in parallel draw more current, while resistors in series draw less current. Okay. So let's look at an example. Uh, let's look at a numerical example. And it'll just be a really simple one. Okay, so let's say we have a 10 volt battery and then two resistors in parallel. Okay, so let's say that they're both 20 ohms. So first thing we can do is that we can use this equation up here at the top to simplify to find out the total current that's coming from the battery. Okay. So we can say the equivalent resistance is going to be R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So that's going to be 20 times 20, which is 400 over 
20 plus 20, which is 40, so that will give us 10 ohms. So with this circuit to the battery, all this, all this battery sees is a circuit like this. It sees 10 ohms. So we know a 10 volt battery, if it sees 10 ohms of resistance, is going to provide 1 amp. So here we know that I total is equal to 1 amp. And what we can do is that this forms a little bit of a, or what this forms what's called a current divider. So this total current, 1 amp, is going to be divided amongst these two resistors. And what we can do to find the current I1 and the current I2 is just use Ohm's law. Okay, so we know that each one of these resistors has 10 volts across it because we're using that 10 volt supply. Okay, and there's nowhere else for that voltage go, to go, so that 10 volts has to be dropped completely across each of these resistors, or else KVL won't be satisfied. So let's say 10 volts has to be equal to I1 times 20 ohms. Okay, so we can say 10 volts divided by 20 ohms is equal to I1, and this is going to give us half an amp. And then we can do the same thing for I2, which will give us half an amp. And if we look back at the circuit, just to sanity check our numbers a little bit, what we can see is that we have one amp going in, and I'll use blue here, we have one amp going in, half an amp coming out, and then another half an amp coming out. So the half an amp plus half an amp means one amp. One amp in, one amp out, KCL is satisfied. Same, similarly, KVL is satisfied because we have 10 volts across each of these resistors. So around any loop, the sum of voltage rises and drops is going to be zero. So KVL is satisfied, KCL is satisfied. We know that we did the right thing whenever we were solving this circuit. Okay, so let's do one more example, except this time we're going to have three parallel resistors. And then uh, you can see how you, it's a little bit harder to work with parallel resistors than series resistors, but all you have to do is take things one step at a time, simplify one thing, then simplify another thing, and then it becomes a whole lot simpler. Okay, so let's say that we have, I'll scroll down, let's say we have another 10 volt battery. Okay, we have this 10 volt battery, a 20 ohm resistor, in parallel with 20 ohm resistor in parallel with a 10 ohm resistor. Okay, so you said before we can't use that really nice and neat formula. We can't use this formula here for three resistors, okay, because then it gets a little bit more complicated. Okay, but what we can do is we can use that formula for, let's say, these two resistors. Okay, so what we can do is we can say, go ahead and write I total, then I1. I2 and I3. What we can do is say let's take this 20 ohm and 20 ohm in parallel and let's simplify it. Let's get an equivalent resistance for it. So we can say equivalent resistance. I'm going to use equivalent resistance 1 just to make sure that we know this isn't the final equivalent resistance. It's just REQ1. And it's going to be 20 ohms times 20 ohms over 20 ohms plus 20 ohms. Sorry, my handwriting is just terrible, but I'm narrating it so you should be able to follow along. So that's going to be, again, 400 on top, 40 on bottom, so that'll give us 10 ohms. All right, so let's rewrite this circuit. We said that that 20 ohm and 20 ohm resistor was now just 10 ohms, and that's in parallel with that other 10 ohm resistor here. So let's see. This resistor is shown here, and then these two resistors they're shown with their equivalent resistance there. Okay, so next step, now we have two resistors in a parallel. We can use that same formula. So I'll just use our equivalent since this is the last one. It's going to be 10 ohms times 10 ohms over 20 ohms, or 10 ohms plus 10 ohms. Okay, so that's 100 over 20. That's going to give us 5 ohms there. Oh, I forgot to write the battery voltage. So the next step is that we have this supply, and all this battery sees is a 5 ohm resistance. Okay, so a 10 volt battery, if it sees a 5 ohms of resistance, it's going to give off 2 amps. Okay, so now let's go back up to this, let's go back up to the top. 
I'll, you know, I'll go ahead and just rewrite this circuit. We have the supply and then three resistors in parallel. And those resistor values are 20 ohms, 20 ohms, and 10 ohms. You know this battery is going to be supplying 2 amps, a 10 volt battery. So what we can do is we can now say, okay, we have 2 amps. This is all, this here at the top is all one node because it's all connected here. So this is all one node. So the current in to this whole blue line has to equal the current out of this blue line. What we can do now is we can just use Ohm's law for each of these resistors. So we can say this first res or this resistor here, I1, we want to know its current. So we can say the voltage across it is 10 volts because of KVL. So 10 volts has to be equal to I1 times its resistance, which is 20 ohms. We can then say I1 is equal to 10 volts divided by 20 ohms, or half an amp. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for I2. I'm just going to go ahead and use this simplified formula. So I2 is going to be the same 10 volts divided by 20 ohms. It's going to give us another half an amp. And then let's look at I3. So I3, that's going to be 10 volts again. But this time we're dividing it by 10 ohms. That's going to give us 1 amp. So into this node, we have 2 amps in. Okay, so red means it's going in, and then coming out we have half an amp, half an amp, and then over here we have one amp. Okay, so the sum of all those green currents is going to be two amps, and then, so we have two amps going in, two amps coming out, so KCL is satisfied, and then the voltage across each of these resistors, voltage across all of them is 10 volts, so it doesn't matter which loop we take, whatever loop is going to give us a uh, KVL satisfied, so that's going to make, that's going to tell us that we did this circuit correctly. KVL is satisfied, KCL is satisfied. We know the voltage and the current across all of these resistors, uh, so we have effectively solved this circuit. So you can tell whenever you have three resistors in parallel, uh, the first step you're going to be doing is just, or the first thing you do is that you just simplify uh, two of those resistors in parallel, okay? And then you get an equivalent resistance, and then scroll back up. First thing you do is we simplified these two here and that gave us this resistor. Then we just had a resistor in parallel with the resistor. We already know how to work with that so then we can simplify these to get another resistor and that'll let us, let us figure out the current from the battery and we can use that to make sure that we are satisfying KVL or KCL. Excuse me. So that's how you're going to be working out parallel combinations of resistors. So in the next lecture, what we're going to be doing now that we know how to work series and parallel resistors, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a couple of more complex examples. It could be, you know, more resistors in series, more resistors in parallel, some in series, some in parallel, you know, just a bunch of different steps you have to take. But for each of these problems, the only thing you have to do is say, what is one thing that I can simplify? And then that's going to tell you how to continue on with the circuit. So you just, all you have to do each step, simplify one thing using the uh, using the equations that we've discussed and that we've derived. Simplify one thing at a time and then before you know it you'll be able to solve the entire circuit. So that's all I have for you. Uh, if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise thank you for watching.